user password entered log in there we go you are logged in so it fixed itself how impressive is that gpt pilot allows you to work with ai to create sophisticated full stack applications i know i've reviewed a few other ai coding assistants but gpt pilot really stands alone the level of complexity and sophistication that you can build into a full stack application simply by working with ai with gpt pilot is incredible and gpt pilot is made for engineers and engineering teams so i'm going to show you how to use it today. They're the sponsor of today's video and they have an amazing VS Code plugin that just came out. So let's use that. Let's go. So with VS Code open, I'm going to go over to my extensions right here and I'm just going to type in GPT Pilot. And there it is, GPT Pilot Alpha. So you're going to click this and I already have it installed. So go ahead and click install. And once you have it installed, you're going to see this little tab right here on the left side. Click that. We click open GPT Pilot. And since I've already done this, it's a little different. But the first thing you're going to be greeted with is asking for your GPT-4 API key. Once you do that, click create new app. And the really nice thing is you you can save your progress along the way. If you build a complex enough application, it could take a few hours to do in collaboration with the AI. But a few hours is nothing compared to potentially weeks of work that it would have taken without this. And what we're gonna be building today is a full stack application that allows for authentication. So logging in, resetting the password, registering, everything, full stack. So what is the project name? AuthMe, hit enter. Describe your app in as much detail as possible. So we're gonna create a Node.js app that enables users to register and log into the app. On the front end, create only three pages, one that enables users to log in, the other that enables users to register, and the third one shows the data of the logged in user. Make sure that after registration or login, the user is kept logged in in a session so that when you visit the homepage, you can see the login user. And we're gonna be using Mongo for the database. Now you can build anything here. Okay, now that we have this described, go ahead and push send, and it's gonna to start asking me questions. So again, this is an engineer working with the AI together to create an amazing application. What authentication method should we use for the login and registration process? If you don't care, you could just say, I don't care, choose whatever you want, but I'm gonna say JWT tokens. Should the user verification process require email confirmation? No. Do we need password strength requirements or complexity validation for the user registration? Yes, but you can decide what that is. Should the homepage display any specific user data besides the username or email? Just the first name. All right, now it's asked me all the clarifying questions that it needs, and it's giving me a project summary, as you can see here. I'm gonna make this screen a little bit bigger. So now it is doing planning and it's saying, here are all the technologies that you're gonna be using. Now it already stopped and it's waiting for an input from me. So please set up your local environment so that the technologies listed can be utilized. When you're done, write done. So I can either write done or I can simply click this done button. I'll click the done button. I already have Mongo installed. Some of these things it can actually install itself, but I like to just take a look and if I don't notice anything that I clearly don't have, I go forward forward and click done. And now it's creating the action plan for development. And the nice thing is as you're developing, you're going to run into bugs just like any developer would. And you can work with the AI to debug things, to test things along the way, and to make sure that you're ironing out things as you go. And this iterative process between an engineer and an AI is really what distinguishes GPT pilot. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the descriptions of what it's gonna be building. Implement user registration backend logic, and we have the programmatic goal, we have the user review goal. Here's another one, create the registration page. So it's saying exactly what it's gonna be building. Now for the actual development. Implementation task one, initialize a Node.js project with express.js and set up a basic server. So here we go. It says here to implement task one, you'll need to follow these steps, but that just means that it's gonna run it for me, and you'll see that in a minute. So here you can see it's planning all the commands that it's going to have to write out. Okay, here we go. So now it paused and it says, can I execute the command npm init dash y? And it gives you a timeout window that it can execute that within. So can I execute this? Yes. Yes, you can. And the nice thing is as it's building, we're actually going to see the code being written over here on the left side, all the files being created. And if it ever needs input on a specific line of code, it actually pulls up that file, highlights the line of code and asks you for that input. So here we go. Can I execute the command npm install express. Yes, you can. Okay, so here's the first good example. So I'm gonna move that over a little bit 
And what we see here is that it asked me for input. Please open the file server.js and on line three, check it out. So here we go. Input required. Decide on a fallback port number other than 3000 if necessary. So it is highlighted for me. I'll fall back to 3002. And that's it. You just save the file and you continue and we keep going just like this. So can I execute the command node server.js? Yes, server is running on port 3002, great. And now what we're gonna be doing is testing whether the server is spun up correctly. So it's saying, okay, I'm gonna spin up the server, then you're gonna run this curl command to just make sure it's up and running. And it's also telling me what to look for if it did work properly. Okay, so stopped, we're gonna click start app. Now the app is running on port 3002. Scroll up a little bit, we're gonna grab this curl command. And it asked me to ping port 3000, but I believe it's 3002, so I'm just gonna change that, hit enter. And there we go, it's alive. So we can either stop the app or we can just continue and I will continue. Now it's gonna install packages, task two. And so now you're starting to get the feel of the kind of ping pong back and forth between myself and the AI building this application. Okay, so we got to another stopping point. Can I execute the command npm install mongoose? Yes. So all I really have to do while it's sitting here building things is just confirm and make sure it's working. So here we can see user.js just got built out. And now we have a pause. Open the file.env and on line one, check out the required input. Okay, so let's see. So it just says replace with your MongoDB connection string if you're not using the default local but we are so we just delete that comment save and continue and yes you can do npm start okay so we have our first error so it says can't find module.env and that's because we don't have it installed. So can I start debugging this issue? Yes. So here we go. The error message indicates that .env package is not there. Can I install it? Now it's asking me to install it. Yes, you can. NPM start again. And that seems like it worked. We have two warnings, which is what we're seeing here, but that's okay. Now we've reached a point where it's asking me to make sure everything's working again. So start app. Okay, these are all warnings. That's okay. And MongoDB connected. So it looks like it's working. So we're just going to click continue. Now it's going to be implementing user registration backend logic with password hashing using bcrypt. All right, we got another one. npm install bcrypt, yes. Okay, now it's gotten to the point where it actually wants me to test user functionality. So I'm going to try to register a new user for the app. So we'll go ahead, click start app, and then we're going to run this curl request to just make sure that the user registration works. Now I could also do this through the browser, no problem. All right, so I pasted in the code. Let's see if it works. User created successfully, amazing. Okay, so now that we know it works, we're gonna come back here and we're just gonna click continue. And it's gonna keep building, it's that simple. And it looks like we're about a third of the way done. So here we go, now it's creating a bunch of new pages. It's also adding to the readme, which is really cool. So it's actually creating a readme as well. Okay, so now it needs to install EJS and Bootstrap, go ahead. And now it's gonna start doing the front end, I think. So now it is asking me if I wanna do something. Can I execute the command make direct Yes. I need human intervention. Copy the bootstrap CSS and JS files into the public slash CSS and public slash JS directories respectively. Okay, so it does seem like I need to do this part manually. So let's go download those libraries. So I go to getbootstrap.com and click download. And I just downloaded it to the directory it told me to. And here it is. So let's unzip it. And there we go. CSS and JS, those are the two things I need. So I am simply going to replace what I have in there. There we go, I'll delete these. And now it should be good to go. Let's just make sure. Yep, there's everything. All right, that was very easy. Next, let's start the app just to make sure it works. We have some warnings, but otherwise it seems like it works, so continue. Can I execute the command node server.js? Yes. Okay, so we have a little error. Got incorrect CLI response. It's a deprecation warning. So this is a warning. We shouldn't have got the error, but let's see, go ahead and debug it. And it might just say, hey, this is actually a warning, no big deal. Yeah, the deprecation warnings are not critical and should not prevent the server from starting. Okay, so it might try to fix it anyways. No debugging appears to be necessary. Okay, so we've gotten to another point where GPT Pilot is asking me to verify that it's working. So let's do that. So we just click again, start the app. We have some deprecation warnings and these are all warnings so that should be fine. Server is running on port 3002, MongoDB connected. Okay, so we're gonna grab this curl request, gonna copy it, switch over to terminal, paste it in, 
hit enter. User successfully created. Let's try it again just to make sure we get an error warning now because this user is already created. Perfect. User already exists. Okay, now that's it. We just click continue. Implementing task five. Implement password strength requirements as a middleware in the registration route. So now it's writing out the plan to put in stronger password requirements and now it's actually coding it. Okay, there it made the changes. Okay, now it's asking if it could do NPM start, sure. Next, it's gonna ask me to test if the password strength requirements are correctly implemented. And it's giving me the code to do that. So here it says password weak. And it's gonna ask me to spin up the server again and try it again manually. So there it is, so I just click start app again. I can scroll up, grab this command right here, switch over to my terminal, paste it in, Hit enter, and there we go. Password does not meet strength requirements, perfect. Okay, so I click continue, we keep going. Now it's writing the JWT secret code. Okay, so it wrote a bunch of code. Now it's asking me to install a few things, go ahead. Okay, and I can tell that it is asking me to verify something. So anytime you see code highlighted like this, it's asking to verify. So let's look at it. Add a secure JWT secret key. So I'm just gonna add super secure. It doesn't really matter for this test. I'll save it, open this back up and continue. Now we have another one, session secret key, and it'll be super duper secure and continue. All right, now we're gonna test the login functionality. So let's click start app, grab that command. I'm gonna paste in the command they gave me and I'm actually gonna use a user that I already know is registered. So back up here for my previous commands, copy that. All right, and then I'm gonna use the password of password one, two, three and hit enter. Logged in successfully, perfect. And it responded with a token, awesome. All right. Back here, continue. And now we are two thirds done, congratulations. 66.67% of your project generation. And before continuing, it's actually creating documentation, which I absolutely love. Very cool. And here's the documentation on the left side. Bunch of information about how this is built. Now implement task seven, create login page using EJS and Bootstrap and handle successful login by redirecting to the homepage. And here's some of the code. And we're on dev step 116 now. And another really nice thing is that you can always go back. If you have any problems, you can go back to any step in this entire process, all 116 steps. You can restart from there and go forward in different directions if you choose. So if you don't like the way something came out or if you run into any bugs, simply go back to a step and restart it from there. All right, NPM start again. Yes, it's just making sure that it's working. And look how much code has been written already. I mean, there's so many different files. All right, dev step 121 to test if the task was completed successfully, the user can follow these steps. So now it's asking me to do it. And now I'm actually going to use the web login to see if it worked. And when it's done, it's going to give me the little message to start the app. Yep. So go ahead and click start. I'm going to grab the login URL right there. And here we are. So let's make sure that we can log in. So I'm going to grab the same user that I just logged in through the terminal, paste it in, and then I'm going to grab the password as well. Paste it in. Log in. Invalid email or password. Okay. Okay. So let's make sure we can still log in with this found redirecting to home. All right, so it does work through the console, but it's not working through the interface. Okay, so we're gonna debug this now. So it says right here, if something is wrong, tell me. So I'm gonna tell it right away. Okay, so I'm gonna say through the terminal, it works fine, but when I try to log in using the same credentials through the UI, I get this error and then I paste it in. And we're gonna click submit and hopefully it's gonna be able to fix it. Okay, so given the information provided by your colleague, it appears that the issue lies in integrating the front-end login form with the back-end log login logic. The fact that the login works through the terminal but not through the UI suggests that there might be a problem with the form submission. Okay, perfect. So it's gonna to try to fix it now. Let's see what it does. All right, now it's asking for some user input. Input required, line 62 of users.js. So we're already there. Let's go to line 62, there it is. And it says, add the required input. So add server logic to handle incorrect email password and redirect with an error message. Okay, that's fine. And the same thing here. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to save and continue. Type Y to continue. Okay, submit. All right, now we're going to test it again. Start app, grab this URL right here. Okay, let's try it again. All right, user password entered. Log in. There we go. You are logged in. So it fixed itself. How impressive is that? Very cool. Switch back to the app and continue. 
So it's asking to do npm start again. Yes, great. Can I start debugging the issue? So we have a deprecation warning. So it probably doesn't need to do anything with that, but it's asking to anyway. So go ahead. Yeah, so the deprecation warnings are likely not a cause of critical failure, but may require attention in future updates. So it's still gonna try to fix it and do it a little bit better. Remove the deprecated mongoose warnings. Now it's asking to run node trace deprecation. Yes, you can. Now it says manually verify that session persistence works by logging in, restarting the server and verifying that the session remains active. Okay, start. Now here I'm logged in, refresh the page. I'm still logged in. I'm gonna stop the server. I'm gonna restart the server, go back, refresh, and I'm still logged in, perfect. All right, implementing task number nine, build the homepage to display the logged in user's first name using the data retrieved from the JWT payload. Okay, here we go. NPM start again, yes. Testing everything is working, great. Moving on to the next step. Okay, now it's gonna ask me to do something. So again, log in, then I'm gonna be redirected to the homepage, verify that the page displays my name. And for a more automated way to test the implementation from the terminal using curl, we can do that. But I'm gonna do it the manual way. So I'm gonna click start, I'm gonna go over here, welcome test, refresh, and I'm still logged in and it still says welcome test, so perfect. All right, we're done, congratulations. You've reached 100% of your project generation. So now we have a full stack application, front end, back end, a way to log in, a way to store that login information in the database. We have a JWT secret protocol set up, completely done for us by AI, by GPT Pilot. It is super impressive. Now, I worked with it step-by-step step throughout the process to verify that it worked. I ran into some issues and I fixed it with the help of AI. And finally, now it's writing more information in the readme file. The app is done, now you can use it. Wonderful, look at all that beautiful code written. Now it's asking me if I wanna add any features or changes. And so for now, I'm just going to click enter for no, but of course you can continue to extend this application. And as I mentioned before, if I click this little back arrow right here, I select an app, auth me, you can select any of these major steps. So I'm going to say coding, and then you can also select a development step. So you can start over from any of these steps. And these steps are referencing the different steps that we went through to build this application. If you run into any problems, jump in their Discord. The two founders are great. They're super helpful. They'll help you out. I'll drop the Discord link in the description below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.